Hey Faith Folk, welcome and welcome back to another Dolls I Don't Want video. We've got some really fun stuff to get into today from a myriad of brands and we're just going to have a lovely little negative time. But for those of you who might not know what I'm talking about, this is a series of videos that I do on my channel where I talk about dolls that have either recently released or dolls that are like upcoming that I don't plan on purchasing for one reason or another. Sometimes it's just like, yeah, I think that's a cool design, but ultimately I don't like it enough to spend money on it. Sometimes it's, I think this doll is an abomination and should never have been made. You just really never know what you're going to get into, but this is a video where I can talk about all the dolls that I have so many opinions on that like I don't want to buy and make reviews on, right? <laughs> now, I do want to say real quick, last time I did a Dolls I Don't Want video, I did also do like a companion video of the dolls that I did want to purchase because you guys did ask for that and I'm happy to do so in the future, but there won't be one for this video just because there actually aren't any. I think, I think there was one doll. I think there was one doll that I was like, oh, I could include technically. But obviously one doll is not enough for a dolls I do want video. So we're just not going to be doing that this time. We're just going to stick to the dolls I don't want here. But uh, hopefully it will still be a super fun time for y'all. So let's go ahead and just dive right on into it. One last thing before we can get into it. I did forget to say because like why would I ever do a proper intro? If you disagree with my opinions in this video, if you love the dolls that I'm talking about, that's fine. Like we are totally allowed to feel different things. Just please don't be upset by it because it's not personal. I just have my own thoughts and I can't really help them. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and start off with some Monster High dolls that I don't plan on purchasing. Starting off with the Wednesday dolls. There's a couple of like casual dolls and then like a fancier Wednesday doll. There's like a Wednesday fashion pack. I'm not going to buy any of it um, primarily because I didn't watch the show. So like why would I buy something from a show that I didn't watch? Like, I don't even know if I would like it. It's just not something that ever like appealed to me. Like I just never really felt the urge to watch the show. I don't know how much I've talked about it on here before, but I'm really weird when I consume media. If I'm being honest, like I can get myself to watch a new show maybe once a year <laughs> for the most part. It's just like re-consuming old media that I enjoy. It's just, I don't know. I, I'm not really into watching new things a lot of the time. Frankly, it's kind of stressful for me. So I never watched Wednesday. Um, so I don't know if I like it or not, but I know I'm not going to buy the dolls because I'm certainly not going to spend like what, how much, these are expensive, aren't they? Like $40 or something. I'll put the price on the screen here. I don't want to spread misinformation, but I'm not going to spend money on dolls that I don't understand the references of. If I'm looking at it purely aesthetically speaking, they look fine, but I don't know if I would honestly buy them even if I had watched and enjoyed the show just because like fine to me is not necessarily worth purchasing so no hate to you obviously if you like these dolls but for me we're gonna be skipping next up also for monster high we have the dia de los muertos Skeleta doll not like the one from last year but they are making another one i think she's pretty cute like i don't dislike her honestly most of this is just like i don't think she's bad but this is not part of my culture so it's not something that i feel like a deep deep tie to so i just don't really feel particularly like i need this doll not saying you could only buy this doll if you celebrate dia de los muertos i'm just saying for me personally it's like not something that i feel the need to have uh, i will say though weirdly enough i want to highlight her box because low-key i like the box better than the actual doll and like that's not something that i ever say like I'm not a packaging person I'm not really a box person every once in a while I'll be like oh that's like nice packaging but generally speaking that's just very very secondary to the doll but in this case the packaging slaps like the slightly more muted colors the like butterflies and the flowers everywhere the candles it's just really really beautiful like oddly beautiful to me and I Loki kind of wish that the doll had more of a color scheme that was close to that just because it's so pretty but even so, I still think that the doll's cute. It's just like not really designed with me in mind. Another holiday doll to discuss is the Winter Cleo doll. I just don't, I don't know. Like I, I kind of was half and half on her. Like there are elements that I do really like, but I just don't think there's enough elements that I like to make me want to purchase her. I just think she could be a lot better. I think the skirt is like a little bit weird in the shape. I feel like inherently speaking having like the doll that's from the desert have snowflakes on her just feels very discordant in my mind and like I understand fully that like you can be from anywhere and like wear something with snowflakes on it like I'm not trying to police real people I'm just saying thematically speaking for the doll it is just kind of a weird choice to me like the fact that they made a winter holiday Cleo doll but not an Abby doll ever and this is going to be apparently the last winter holiday doll because 
the sales were bad. Like maybe the sales were bad because y'all are picking bad characters. <laughs> like I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying like as a Cleo lover, like I love Cleo dolls. I love her designs typically. Like I do think she has really strong designs, but if you're designing for the winter season, Abby is the obvious choice, like a very clear and obvious choice. And I just think it's extremely strange that Monster High went with this instead. Again, there's stuff that I do like. I like the tassels on her shawl. I think that's really cool. Her headpiece is funky. Like there are nice things about this. I do just think it's a bit confusing. And it is sad to me that we're going to be seeing the end of the holiday line now because, or at least like the winter holiday line specifically. I just don't feel like it ever really had a chance. I feel like the feedback from adult collectors who are the people who like Mattel is making these dolls for was pretty clear and pretty obvious. Like people have been clamoring since the original Draculaura holiday doll that like Abby should have a winter themed doll, but that never happened. People said that the Claudine was like a flop, not because they hate Claudine or because they hate the line, but because the design just wasn't it. And it's like, it's just weird to me that y'all, <laughs> I'm talking to Mattel directly, apparently saying y'all. It's just weird to me that Mattel is like, oh, yes, this line just sucks. Guess people just don't like this line. It's like, no, bestie. It's actually what you're doing with the line. Anyway, that was kind of a rant that was unnecessary. I'm not going to get this Cleo. <laughs> a couple other Gen 1 dolls to talk about. Uh, I need to address the Mummy Majesties 2-pack. And I need to say I fully was planning on making a whole dedicated video about this pack. And then I got COVID and like couldn't film for a while and had to play catch up and everything. So I just never did. So y'all are going to get a bit of a more in-depth rant than like I might usually go on in these videos. Buckle up, I guess. <laughs> I really wanted to like this. Like we had known for a while that this pack was coming. We had heard that there was going to be a Cleo and Nefer 2 pack. And I was excited because like Nefer doesn't have that many dolls. I love her original doll. As I said, I tend to like Cleo dolls. Like a lot of the like mummy and Egyptian imagery is stuff that I really enjoy. So like this pack should have been right up my alley, but it just doesn't feel right. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really do like Cleo's base doll. I think that the cut of her kind of bob is really, really pretty. I also do like how it contrasts with Nefer's super long hair. Like Nefer has really, really long hair in this pack. And I think it's fun to have one of the sisters have like super short hair and one have super long hair. Like that's fun. That's cool. I like Nefer's base doll a little bit less just because I think that the like lipstick shade is not very flattering for her. Y'all know I love a fun, bold lip and like a fun, dark lip and all that jazz. I feel like this color could have been really good on a different doll, but I just don't feel like it fits with Nefra. It feels like much too bright for her personality, just in my opinion. Obviously, you guys, again, are free to disagree. Um, I think the shoes for both are totally fine. I don't really mind the little like wrap sleeve situation that they each have going on. Again, I think that that's kind of cute that they are mirroring each other where they both have this element. But that's kind of all the positives that I can say. And I already was mixing in some negatives there. Oh, I like Cleo's headpiece. Let me let me add that. But I don't like the other stuff. I feel like the dresses feel very like Gen 2-ish with the print. Like the print just feels very kitschy, very weird. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's just not for me. I feel like the Gen 1 dolls, like the base doll, is like the Gen 1 doll that we have become more accustomed to seeing on like collector level dolls. And these are technically collector level dolls. They're aimed at adults. But then the print on the dresses, again, feels more like G2, feels more like very kiddish play line. It just doesn't feel like it's designed for the dolls that they're putting it on. And then the accessories, honestly, low key feel a little bit G3 to me. Like I feel like if these accessories were on different dolls, like G3 Cleo, or if we got a G3 Nefer doll, it wouldn't bother me as much. It just genuinely feels like each piece of these dolls was almost designed separately, and then they got put together, and it was like, oh, these don't necessarily mesh, but we gotta rush it out. It just doesn't feel cohesive in any way, for me personally. And I also do feel that for collector-level dolls, these don't look collector whatsoever. Aside from the fact that they're on G1 bodies, like... I just unboxed the Core Refresh Cleo from G3. She definitely had just as high quality pieces as these dolls do. Plus she came with accessories and stuff. They just don't look that high quality, especially the purses. I hesitate to even call them purses. Like they look really bad. The purses themselves, honest to God, to me, if they were just a little bit worse, like if they didn't open, at least Cleo's opens. This would be like a shitty Barbie purse to me, like a low quality Barbie purse. The only thing that makes it even slightly better is the fact that Cleo's at least opens. 
but they're solid. They just look cheap and plastic. It's, I don't know. I think these are real bad. Clearly, um, I've talked a little bit about them. <laughs> so I'll shut up now on these. We can move on. But yeah, I think that these were honestly such a cool concept, but ultimately so poorly executed. We're still on Monster High. We have a few dolls to get through today, clearly. Um, the Sculptman Secrets Series 5, I can't remember what the line's called, because why would I have that knowledge at the top of my head? It's not like this is my job or anything. <laughs> but I did mention back when I did do a Dolls I Do Want video that I love the Draculaura from this line. I think that her kind of more reddish theme is really, really fun and funky. So she because G3, I feel like kind of shies away from red except for Torlai. Like they're low-key afraid to use red. But I don't like the other two dolls in this line. Uh, there were supposed to be three other dolls. The Laguna apparently got canceled. So we're going to be looking at the Twyla. I just, I just don't like this, if I'm being honest. Like, there's genuinely nothing really redeeming to me about her design, which is so sad because I do like Twyla as a character. And I have her Neon Frights doll. And I know it's like an unpopular opinion. I know a lot of people hate that one. I think that doll is super cute. This one I just am not vibing with, especially the haircut, because here's the thing. I feel like short ponytails or short pigtails on dolls, I don't know if it's just me associating them with like more budget releases because like a lot of budget Barbies or old budget um, Monster High dolls had that sort of style. So maybe it's just that that I'm associating in my head, but I just feel like they don't look good, especially when it's polypropylene, which this is definitely going to be polypropylene. I think all of the Sculptimate Secret dolls have had polypropylene. If not, it's definitely most of them. So knowing that this hair is going to have that texture and like be this style, I just know it's going to look absolutely horrendous. <laughs> and I just, I feel bad because like I want more dolls in my girl, but I'm not getting this one. And then similarly, the Venus, this Venus genuinely breaks my heart. I'm so sad that this is what we got because the original Venus doll for G3, like her core doll for G3 is to me the best G3 doll that has come out. Like, I think she is so stunning. Every part of her is so beautifully designed. Like, she's just impeccable. And then this is what happened to her. And the only good thing I can say is I think the idea of her edges being little, like, leaves is really cute. Like, that's a really cool way to tie in her theming of being a plant monster. That is super duper. Realistically, the rest of her makeup I do think is fine, too. However... Um, starting from like least awful to most awful, <laughs> I don't like her outfits, really any of them. I think all of her pieces are, if I'm being generous, pretty mid, but if I'm being more honest, pretty bad. But the worst part about this doll to me is the fact that she has lost her textured hair. And I just, for what reason? Like Venus was one of the only dolls in G3. Actually, hold on. I'm like looking... I think Venus might be the only doll in G3 so far who had like a more natural hair texture. Like Claudine has had some curls and some crimps and stuff, but like Venus had very noticeably like Afrocentric hair and it's beautiful. It's a wonderful fiber. It looks amazing on her. Like she's so pretty. So to go and turn it into this and give her mostly straight polypropylene with a few little braids thrown on top honestly feels like a slap in the face to the representation that Venus brought to the line. Like, it just is so frustrating to me, especially because, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but a large part of why they use polypropylene is because these Sculptment Secret series are a little bit more expensive to produce with the extra outfits and with the whole, like, unboxing thing that you get. And so they use a cheaper hair fiber to keep the production costs down on those lines. If I'm not mistaken, the hair fiber that the core Venus has is also fairly cheap. So, like, there's no reason to not have used that instead. I just think this is genuinely, honestly insulting. And I feel like there are so many other things they could have done instead. Like there's just so many options for how to give a character more Afrocentric hair features or more natural hair features. Like there are so many things that you can do. And I know so many people who make like custom dolls or even just like custom drawings of Venus have had so many cool ideas. And so for Mattel to just say, hey, here is your black character who had textured hair. Now she's got straight hair. That just feels really insulting to me. So um, yeah, really not happy with this one. Really, really disappointed with this one because I love Venus and I really wanted to want another doll of her, but this is just not hidden for me. On that heavy note, we finally finished with Monster High. <laughs> so now we can talk about Bratz. Um, the only thing I need to mention from them is the sleepover reproduction dolls. If you've been around for a while, you'll know that I tend to not be a sleepover doll person. I just 
mostly like dolls that are either in fun casual clothing or are in like fancy clothing fantasy style clothing that sort of thing is more my jam i just have never really felt super drawn to pajama lines so this whole thing was kind of automatically a miss for me that being said their little stuffed animals are so tempting like i am not going to spend 30 dollars on a doll just to get a mini stuffed dinosaur but also i kind of want to <laughs> they're just so cute i think that's a really precious really adorable inclusion and like from what i've seen of these dolls it looks like they have a decent number of pieces it looks like they're you know pretty quality so it's not that i think that these are terrible dolls or like that i think they're trash or anything like that it's just that inherently they weren't designed for me so i'm kind of automatically going to be skipping on them all right next up we're talking about royale high which i did mention in my video on the ugliest doll brands so Probably not a surprise to see it here, but I just like haven't really talked in depth about them. I just think they're ugly. Like, that's kind of it. <laughs> I want to like them because I do think that some of the concepts are kind of cool. Like the image that I have on screen for you guys right now is a fairy one. And I think her hair blend is pretty. I think her makeup is quite fun. I like the little flowery skirt. But I'm never going to be able to get over their weirdly square heads. Yes, I understand. It's like a reference. Yes, I understand. It makes sense. But like, I still think it's ugly. <laughs> I just still think it looks really jarring and stupid on like this kind of more humanoid doll body to have this like rectangle head. It just, it looks just not, just not right to me. So hugely disappointing, but I'm not going to buy any of these. I really thought going into this video, I was like, wow, you know, I'm doing another dolls I don't want video. And like, I'm doing this in a timely fashion. There's not that many dolls to talk about. I'm talking forever. I already know I am and we're not done yet. So <laughs> from the LOL tweens, I forgot what this line was called. Hold on. I, had, I wrote it down somewhere. The neon pop stars. That's what it is. Sorry, I'm disorganized. Uh, I'm not getting either of these dolls. I actually don't even have their names. So the one that's on screen right now is pretty clearly a reference to Taylor Swift. In fact, the reference is so successful that even my husband looked at this doll and went, oh, it's like Taylor Swift. <laughs> I really like the like jacket situation going on there. I think that's pretty fun with like the sequins and then like the funky sleeves and everything. That's super chill, but I just don't like anything else that the doll comes with. So I can't justify buying it for just the jacket, especially on a tweens doll because like their clothing doesn't really fit most of the other dolls that I might want to put in a jacket like this. So it's not even like I could really reuse the piece of clothing. So it's just not worth it for me. I don't think it's like the worst thing ever, but it's just not worth it for me. And then this other one. Oh, is this, is this Kitty K? Because I know, I think this is Kitty K. Because they started doing like tweens versions of OMG characters. She's fine. I was a little bit more tempted for this one just because she's got a lot of shimmery elements. And y'all know I'm a sucker for anything that sparkles. But ultimately speaking, I feel like my automatic response was to not really be interested in this doll. And then I was like, oh, well, maybe. And if that's my response... I feel like that's not enough enthusiasm for me personally to feel comfortable buying a doll. So we're just going to skip out on her, even though I do think she has some fun elements. Um, the tweens are also doing a winter line and we have a younger version of Candylicious. I've never really liked any of the Candylicious dolls. Like I know she's had a couple and I, I don't think I've ever liked any of them. I don't think this is an offensive design. I like the skirt, but I just don't love any of it. So like, why would I spend my money on it? And then the other one from that line is, I believe, a new character. I like her makeup. I kind of sort of like the fabric of her pants, but I don't really like the design and everything. I don't know. Like when I first saw it, I was like, ooh, maybe. But again, it was kind of creeping. And I'm like, ah, I don't really know. And when I have conflicted feelings like that on a doll, I just, I feel like they're probably a doll that I'm going to end up regretting. So I just kind of err on the side of caution and don't buy them. So we're not buying this one. Then from the Magic Mixies Pixlings in my last dolls i don't want video no hold on it wouldn't have been that my last dolls i do want video i talked about one of the larger pixling dolls luna i can't remember the names on these but again you'll see the image on screen so you'll know what i'm talking about i think that this one honestly looks fairly cheap like i think the fabric is the same as the fabric used for luna's doll but something about the design and like the colors makes it look like a much lower quality fabric and especially given the fact that these dolls are sixty dollars a piece I, no, there's no way I'm buying this. Maybe it was a Dolls I Don't Want video that I talked about Luna in because I think I might have said I would only buy her on sale because I am waiting for a sale for her because I think she's cute, but like definitely not for $60. And this doll I, I don't think is honestly something that looks high quality enough for me to buy 
even if it was on sale, which is sad because I'm like a huge Pixlings fan, but just not for me. On um, this next one, I'm slightly more tempted by, <laughs> again, I don't have the name, but she's another one of the larger dolls. So she is expensive and I definitely would not get her like full price. And I'm putting her on this list because I'm going to say that I'm not going to get her anyway, like just point blank period, even if she does go on a sale, mainly because I have changed my mind on the Shimmerverse Unia or Unia doll, the one with like the little pegacorn that came out. And that doll has a very similar color scheme and a kind of similar outfit, in my opinion. And I feel like I don't need them both. And that one definitely is one that draws me in more. So while I do think that she's a cutie, I just don't think that she's cute enough for me to need to like put money into her. So we're going to enjoy her from afar. I promise I'm like kind of sort of almost done. <laughs> kind of sort of almost. Um, Holiday Barbie. I feel like I don't talk about Barbie that much in these videos just because mainly the Barbies that I like are like older Barbies. And so obviously they're not being produced or being currently released. So why would they be in this video? But I did feel like the Holiday Barbie is so iconic that I kind of have to mention her. I'm not getting her though. <laughs> I like it's okay. I don't think it's the worst Holiday Barbie ever, but it just doesn't scream remarkable to me. So like not really something I'm into. Also, they used AI to help like create the box art, which is totally not a vibe. I AI is so hard because I feel like there is an application for it where if you have an AI that is trained specifically off of like works that people have consented to being used to train that AI, I feel like it could be a really cool tool for artists to use to supplement their art or to give them ideas or like reference poses or stuff like that. Like I feel like there is an application for AI that is not inherently harmful and not taking away from like actual craftspeople. However, Mattel using AI to generate the background for their holiday Barbie is something that I feel is taking away from like actual craftspeople because an artist could have drawn that instead but that's not what happened. And like, that's just not the vibe. That's not something that's super chill. So um, I don't like the design of this doll. And I also dislike her on principle. So double won't be getting her. Then we have the fashion frontier Barbie and low key. I actually really want this. <laughs> I think she's so fun. So pretty like the space cowboy aesthetic is like just funky and different and interesting. Even my husband was like, Oh, that's a cool doll. He's like very much in a cowboy phase right now. <laughs> and I do love her. However, she retails for $75 plus shipping because Lord knows Mattel Creations is not going to give you free shipping. Why would they want to do that? <laughs> $75 I think is already a lot to ask me to spend on this doll. But then when you add on the fact that I am currently not a Barbie um, signature member, is that what the club is called? Point is you have to have some sort of Barbie membership to even buy this doll and that's another $10. And you do have that for the whole year. But like... I just don't feel like I buy enough Barbies or like Barbie releases things enough that I like that I would get my money's worth out of it. Like I, I feel like I would be paying the $10 just for this one doll and then I would not use the membership again. So at that point, it's $85 plus shipping for this one doll. And I like her, but I don't like her that much. So as cute as she is, she's another one that I'll be like enjoying from afar because I just cannot justify spending that much money on her. Last thing to talk about from Barbie is a collab with, pardon my pronunciation if I'm wrong, Keiichi Tanami. And I do think this doll is really cool. Um, it's obviously, like I said, a collab with an artist. And I think this is just so funky. Like their work is very clearly like super kind of out there and strange and surrealist. And it's totally a vibe. I think this is an incredibly unique doll, an incredibly interesting doll. Not every single element is something that I love, but I think the entire cohesive look is something that is just like no other doll in my collection is even close to looking like this. She's so different and so fun. And also being a collab with an artist, I do think is like a really fun thing that Barbie has done a couple of times now, at least like within the like time that I've been paying attention. I know that Barbie has probably done a lot more than that. <laughs> but again, it's like the price point that's holding me back. I think this doll is like $150 retail. And while she's beautiful and like while I understand that the collab is going to bring the price up, I just don't. I just don't think I can justify that. I just don't think that that's something that I can justify spending right now. So we're not going to add this to the collection, but I very much appreciate the vibes. The vibes are weird and I like that. Okay, we're almost done. <laughs> the next one I want to talk about is a new brand and this is the Cup of Style dolls. I just have like one on screen here. This is the tomato themed one, but they are blind box dolls that come in like a cup noodles style packaging. And then they are kind of all supposed to be themed around that. So as you can see, they kind of have ramen noodle texture hair. There's like a wasabi one. There's um, a Sakura one. I'm trying to remember all of them, but I, I can't remember the present moment. 
Um, I think that these are kind of fun and low key. I might heavy, 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 heavy might end up trying just one out. I do think the wasabi one is really cute. However, they are blind box dolls. I do think they might have codes on the bottom, but last time I checked, I couldn't find all of the codes. And like, I don't like the others enough to risk getting one of those. Like in general, when I get blind boxes, I try to get blind boxes where I feel like I'd be happy no matter what I pulled out of the box. And that is so far from how I feel with this brand. Like I really would only be happy with the wasabi one. And even that one, I'm like, I don't know if this would scratch the itch that I want it to. Like, I think the texture of the hair is really fun. And like, I think it would be a cool little fidget toy to have. I'm not sure how long I would feel that way though. And then I'm worried that afterwards I would kind of feel regretful of my purchase. So ultimately speaking, I probably won't pick these up if I could find the codes and if they go on clearance, maybe at that point it would be worth it for me. But for now, I think it's probably safer to just write the brand off. Not because I think it's horrible, but just because... For me personally, the blind box thing is a bit too risky. And then the last thing to talk about is the Wicked Dolls. We're going to pop up the Galinda doll. I have a lot of thoughts and I don't think any of them will be popular, but here we go. Once again, just, just to say, these are my opinions. You're allowed to have different opinions. It doesn't mean that I hate you as a person. That being said, weirdly enough, I have managed to get to the ripe age of 27 without ever seeing The Wizard of Oz. Don't know how that happened, but I have seen Wicked exactly once. And it was a really enjoyable experience. I thought the story was really fun. I thought like the actors were really good. And I like enjoyed the music. Some of it I still listen to routinely. So in theory, this might be something that is kind of up my alley, right? Like it's not like the Wednesday Dolls where I've never seen the IP this is from. I like have and I did enjoy it. And I probably will at some point. I say that, but then the idea of watching something that's like kind of new creeps back in. There's a possibility that I'll watch the Wicked movie. Okay, I'll put it that way. I'm not completely opposed to it. However, here's the controversial take. I don't like Ariana Grande. And I know that's controversial. <laughs> and I don't want to get like too, too much into it. I just, I don't like a lot of celebrities because I feel like a lot of celebrities don't seem to be the best people. And I'm not trying to say that I think, um, well, no, you know what? Whatever. I'm going to say it with my full chest. I don't think Ariana Grande is a good person. There. I did it. <laughs> I just don't feel like she's the best. And I'm sorry. Like, if you like her, you're totally allowed to like her. But for me, I feel like everything I've learned about her has been against my will. And like, it just doesn't impress upon me that she seems like a great human being. Could be totally wrong. I don't know her. But like, also, the string of like cheating and maybe cheating not really super don't really love that and i don't feel like someone who's going to lie or betray their romantic partner is someone that i could probably trust so there's my hot take is this doll pretty does she have a nice pink dress absolutely do i want ariana grande's face in my house no so <laughs> i'm not gonna be buying her and the other wicked dolls to me i'm just kind of like they're all right i don't know like they don't really speak to me so i don't plan on buying them but um yeah, why would I not include a super hot take in my Dolls I Don't Want video? God forbid it just be normal. God forbid I just talk about the dolls in a normal way. I just have so many opinions and I'm really bad at keeping them myself. So there we are. That's everything I have to say today. <laughs> I definitely said enough. Um, definitely let me know your thoughts on all these dolls in the comments down below. If I didn't mention a doll that you don't plan on buying, feel free to talk about that. I always love to hear y'all's opinions. And please don't be too mean to me. I'm sorry. I just have thoughts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me today, guys. I do hope you're able to enjoy. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, or your night, or whatever it might be. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.